Hi, Internet. As promised, we have for you a breakdown of line of sight for Kill Team 2 and all of its glorious, granular detail. If you haven't seen our How to Play Kill Team video, we recommend you check that out first, as it gives an extensive overview of the game. With that said, let's dive in. Line of sight rules in Kill Team 2 are a stupendous simulation of close quarters gunfights, but have been a challenge for many players to wrap their heads around. They're explained on pages 70 to 71 in the core manual. By the end of this video, you should be a pro. We'll break down the criteria for line of sight and explain with some examples, but we'll also give you our shorthand checks for determining cover lines, which the core manual can make a bit more complicated than it needs to be. First, we'll define what line of sight actually is. Simply stated, if the active operative has line of sight to an enemy operative, it means that they can make a legal shooting attack at that model. There are various checks that need to be satisfied in order to determine whether the particular enemy is a legal target and therefore in line of sight. The first check is to see if the enemy operative is visible. This means, can the active operative see the target enemy operative? This is drawn from the head of the active operative. If it's not immediately obvious, you and your opponent can stoop down to the table level and see from the perspective of the active operative if they can see any part of the target enemy. Any piece of the enemy model is a valid target to shoot at, excluding the base. This means if the tip of an enemy's gun is visible around a corner or over a ledge, that enemy model is visible. The next few checks rely on checking for if terrain is blocking the target model. In order to determine if the active operative's field of view for the shot is blocked by intervening terrain, you must check the model's cover lines. On the bottom right of page 70, there is a graphic that demonstrates what a cover line is. It is not a single line at all, but rather a cone of lines from a single point on the base of the active operative to all points on the potential target enemy operative's base. You can start the cone from any point on the shooting operative's base. Now, it's really challenging to visualize this cone and can get a bit wonky trying to hold up two rulers or use multiple laser line pointers to make this cone. The cone as a whole is largely irrelevant and will illustrate how to determine the cover line easier. If the check you are making is whether a terrain feature is blocking your active operative shot, the better question to answer is, can my active operator completely shoot around the side of the terrain and ignore it? The reason why this is important is that in most situations, you only need to check one line. The best chance that an active operator usually has at avoiding the terrain is from the far side of its base. You then visualize a straight line from that point of your active operator's base to the far opposite side of the target enemy operative's base. We recommend using the target lock laser pointer from Army Painter for this. This is the active operative's best chance at avoiding the terrain for the shot. If they cross over the terrain with the single line, then the terrain is clearly between the two models. If the line does not cross over any terrain, then the terrain can be ignored for the shot. Cover lines are also used to determine measurements for obscuring and cover, which we're about to get into. The distances measured are from the point that the cover line would intersect the terrain directly to the target operative. When determining these distances, we again recommend using a straight line laser pointer. All right, back to line of sight. So, after verifying your intended target enemy operative is visible to your active operative, you must then check to see if the enemy operative is obscured. Heavy terrain features grant obscurity, which is explained in more detail on page 72 of the core manual. In order to be obscured by a terrain feature, the cover line to the desired target model must pass through the heavy terrain feature. The enemy operative must be on the opposite side of the heavy terrain feature from the active operative and must be further than circle or two inches. However, if the enemy operative is within circle or two inches of their edge of the obscuring terrain, they do not benefit from the obscuring quality. What this aims to simulate is how challenging it is to shoot through dense ruins or deep into a building. However, if the target is standing close enough to a window or doorway, they become a much easier target to draw a bead on. So at this point, let's say the active operative taking the shot has found a target enemy operative that is visible, 
and not obscured. The next check is to see what their order is. If the target enemy has an engage order, no further checks are needed to made as they are now officially in line of sight of the active operative. If they have a conceal order though, you must check to see if they're in cover. Cover is defined as being within triangle, or one inch, of something that grants cover. Light and heavy terrain features both grant cover, but interestingly so do other models' bases. A model that is in cover and with a conceal order is not a valid target. We'll tell you how you can get around this cover and conceal combination shortly. So, to summarize what we've reviewed so far, in order for an enemy operative to be a valid target for a shooting attack, the target must be visible and not obscured to the active operative, and additionally not in cover if they have a conceal order. In practice, it's easier to do this in reverse as you survey the board state for your potential targets. Any enemy operatives that have conceal orders and are clearly in cover, you can just ignore as a potential target. Any enemy operatives with an engage order but are obscured by terrain, you can also ignore. Finally, verify which remaining enemy operatives are visible to your active operative, and those are likely the ones you can shoot. If this is still a bit confusing, please stick with us, as we'll go through many examples here shortly. Now, we've mentioned several times here that you can ignore obscuring and benefits of cover, technically, and here's how. As the active operative trying to make the shot, you can negate an enemy operative's obscuring from terrain with certain equipment options, or simply by standing within triangle, or one inch, of the heavy terrain dividing the active operative and the target enemy operative. By standing this close to the terrain, it's as if the active operative is taking the shot standing just outside a window or in the doorway of a ruins or building, making it a lot easier for them to see their foe inside. Furthermore, you can get around cover in two ways. First, if the active operative is within circle or two inches of the target enemy operative, the enemy operative is not considered to be in cover. Think of this as if the active operative strolls up to a barricade, pops their weapon over the top, and shoots down. Also, if the active operative is up on a vantage point, as described on page 72 of the core manual, as well as in our previous video, they treat enemy operatives as having the engage order for the purposes of line of sight if they're in cover caused by light terrain or another operative. However, this only applies to targets that are more than one circle or two inches below them. Some models, like the Commando Grot and a Gene Stealer, block this from happening, though. So be wary of those tricks. It's important to note that there are certain weapons or abilities which grant the keyword no cover. This does not remove cover for the purposes of line of sight, and that is very important to know. In the appendix of the core manual, you can clearly see that no cover prevents the target from gaining the benefit of cover with respect to retaining a successful defense dice, but it does not remove cover from them with respect to line of sight. And that's the extent of the rules. Hopefully, this video has already helped you out a lot, but we've also set up some examples to run through to make sure we're all on the same page. For all of these scenarios, assume that we've already verified that the target is visible to the active operative, but the remainder of the line of sight checks need to be made. We'll describe the scenario, show the situation, and pause for a few seconds to give you a chance to pause the video and think before we give the answer. Example 1. The Skatari is firing at the Orc. The Orc is more than one circle from the heavy terrain between them and has an engage order. The Skatari does not have line of sight as the Orc is obscured by the heavy terrain. Example 2. Let's say the Skatari instead uses its first action to move up to the window of the heavy terrain. The Orc is still more than one circle from the heavy terrain with an engage order. The Skatari now has line of sight to the orc, as being within triangle of the terrain now causes it to ignore the obscuring effect. Example 3. The Skatari and orc are both within one inch of different light terrain. The orc has a conceal order. The Skatari does not have line of sight as the orc is in cover with a conceal order. Example the fourth. Now. The Skatari moves to an elevated position greater than two inches from the Orc, who is still in light cover with a conceal order. 
the Scutari now has line of sight to the orc, as the vantage point that it is on will treat the target enemy operative as having an engage order, thus making them a valid target despite the cover. Example 5, and this one's a bit more complex. This giddy little grot got his hands on some Death Watch armor and an Infernus heavy boulder, which is quite heavy. He wants to teach that knob that's kept him down all these years a lesson. The knob, though, is proper cunning, and is trying to be sneaky, hunching down behind light cover at exactly one inch with a conceal order. The grot is quite smart, though, and knows already from our third example that he can't shoot at the knob. He would like to move around the terrain, but with this heavy weapon he can only move a maximum of square, or three inches, in the same activation that he shoots. The power-armored Grot summons a courage and rushes straight at his old boss, getting within circle, or two inches, of the boss, who is at triangle of the light terrain with a conceal order. The Grot can fire away! He can ignore the cover granted by the terrain by being within circle, or two inches, of the boss knob. And finally, example six. What if the same grot instead darts to the side to try and get a better angle, while sheepishly hoping his boss doesn't see what he's about to do? I'm not gonna pause here because it's kind of an unfair question to ask without showing you the answer. This example was key to demonstrate as it highlights the importance of cover lines. Initially, his boss was within exactly one inch or one triangle of the light terrain. However, by shifting to the side, the grot would draw a new cover line from that new position. This line, when measured from the boss knob to the terrain, is over one inch. Therefore, from this angle, he's not considered to be in cover from the light terrain, and the active operative can shoot. And that's line of sight. It seems very daunting, but once you put models on the table and play the game, you'll find, just as we did, that it's fairly intuitive and easy to determine. It really does speed up games and adds interesting considerations to both movement and positioning that weren't present at all in the previous edition. If there are any scenarios or situations we didn't cover in our examples that you have questions about, or any questions or clarifications at all, please drop a comment below and we will do our best to help you out.